All right, all right. Good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Let's Talk Destiny Virtual Talk Show. I am your host, Jamie Green, and once again, I am beyond excited to have a very special guest with me tonight, um, one of my forever favorite authors, uh, Ms. Beverly Jenkins. And most of us um, that know about Ms. Beverly, we know she is the queen of historical Black romance <laughs> novels. And the thing is, before I started reading your um, books, I wasn't really even into historical literature at all. Yeah. But it yeah. drew me because it helped me to understand that we have a story. Our love is more than just about dysfunction and uh, right. bad baby daddies and baby mamas and all that excess. So I'm just so honored tonight to have you here with me. I want to um, introduce this young lady who doesn't re really need much of an introduction. But Miss Beverly Jenkins is an American author of hysterical, I'm sorry, hysterical, that's me. Historical, yeah, sometimes I am hysterical, girl. <laughs> I've been hysterical all day, Lord help me. Historical and contemporary romance <laughs> novels with a particular focus on 19th century African American life. Now, I'm not going to read all of Ms. Beverly's um, bio because I really think that you should take the time to read some of these things to really understand where she's coming from. But tonight I want to talk to Ms. Beverly um, about the power of her pen and the stroke of the pen and how it can change, literally change lives. And so tonight I want to again welcome you back to Let's Talk Destiny. Thank you for taking time with us tonight. Oh, thank you for the invite to come back. Um, we had a good time the first time and I'm looking forward to, to our time here together this evening. So thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And if anyone has any questions for Miss mm -hmm. Beverly, um, you can write them in the comments mm -hmm. and I will uh, get them to her. We're not going to keep, you know, keep her real tied up tonight because she is a very busy woman. And uh, most people who are creatives, uh, they are busy, but um, mm -hmm. I, she inspires me because I follow her on social media. I'm connected to her on social media. And some days I just shake my head at the <laughs> amount of things that she's accomplishing when I'm struggling to get from the bedroom to the living room. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's what I mean by hysterical. But I, I'm just yeah. so honored to have you here with me tonight. Um, and I trust that I've had a couple of people. I was telling somebody today, Miss Beverly, about, um, mm. well, I call her Miss Bev. I think a lot of people do. Um, when the very first time I was getting ready to invite you, and I was real nervous about it mm -hmm. because I'm like, this is a queen. Like, and oh. um, she, you know, who am I to invite her onto my humble platform? And but I was determined I was going to ask because all she could say was yes or no. And so this lady inboxes me on Facebook and says that she saw that this was after I had got the confirmation. She said, I saw that you were inviting um, Beverly Jenkins to your platform. And I don't know who you are. I've never heard of you. But I think that it would be a good idea for you to watch some Oprah Winfrey interviews because this woman is an A-list <laughs> and she's used to being interviewed by the best. And I was like, she very glad I took my medication today. <laughs> <laughs> so Girl, when I talked to Miss Beverly and I told Miss Beverly what this lady said, she was like, are you serious? So I'm just so glad that, um, though you mean a lot to us. I mean, literally hundreds and thousands and millions of people around the world love Beverly Jenkins novels, mm -hmm. but you're yet so humble and approachable. And I thank you for that. That that has really encouraged me and meant a lot to me. And again, I thank you for coming back tonight. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right, so let's get into our conversation. And if any of our guests 
uh, who are watching in the audience would like to um, ask a question, please feel free to type in the comments and I will um, share it with Miss Beverly and we will talk with her. We have her tonight um, for 30 minutes and I don't want yeah. to mishandle her or her time because she has some <laughs> more she has some more books to want to put out for us. <laughs> okay, first, <laughs> first I wanted to say I, I wanted to invite you to, to back to the um, program this month because mm -hmm. it's known as the month of love, even though people always right. say, well, I show love all year long. You know, if somebody always has to ruin um, every holiday by saying I do it all year long, like, Okay, we know that, but right. right this minute we're talking about this one right here. And so I wanted to have this visionary and trailblazer to come and talk to us about the power of love because your writings illuminate um, the power of love, of Black love specifically that goes all the way back. So what happened that made you decide to write in this particular genre? <clears throat> Well, I had always, I read everything. And because I'm a big fantasy fan. Um, but growing up, I'd always loved a good love story. Um, even though, you know, the folks on TV, because I'll be, what, 72 next next week? <clears throat> oh, wow. And back then, you know, they had, nobody like uh, looked like us was, you know, love stories on TV or in movies or but I still loved a good love story, regardless of who was, who the players were. Right. And, um, and then, so I, you know, and, and the market was closed. The book market was basically closed to us. Uh, we didn't get two uh, black romances traditionally published until the 1990s with um, Sandra Kitt and Oh, I can never remember the sister's name. It'll come back to me. Um, but Rosalind Wells. So mm -hmm. I was writing for me. <clears throat> this little story that I was writing after work. Now, this is BC. This is before children. Uh, me and my yeah. husband. Um, <laughs> you know, we were footloose and fancy free. Come home from work. And he played tennis in high school. <coughs> and he was a printer printer back then. So he come home from work, you know, wash the ink off and go play tennis. And I was working at the Michigan State University Library. So I'd bring home the books that I was reading and work on this little story that I was working on, which would eventually be Night Song. So, uh -huh. yeah. So, you know, and I had no visions of it being published. You know, um, but you know, in looking back, we've always had strong role models of love, whether it was in our family or not. You know, everybody had that, them little old couples at church who right, were married right, for, right. you know, 50 years and, you know, they still hold, <clears throat> still holding hands, you know, tottering <laughs> across the, the, the parking lot going to the car <laughs> after the service. Yes, you know? right. So, yeah, so. You know, aunts and uncles and, and neighbors who, you know, who had this, this, this strong love. So, but the mass media never focused on that with us. That's you know, right. in, in, in mass media's mind, you know, we didn't love our kids. You know, we were welfare moms. We were, you know, our men were dysfunctional and abusers and, and all of that instead of the examples that we could see, like I said, like them little old folks at church, you know? Um, so I was writing a story just for me, you know, Buffalo Soldier and my husband and I had a great love affair. Um, so I was just writing for me. It just happened to get published, but you know, my dream job was to work in a library. I didn't wow. care nothing about, you know, I didn't know anything about publishing. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I wrote love stories, you know, and Tony, Tony Morrison always said that if there's a book out there that you want to read, 
that isn't in the marketplace, then you need to write it. That's right. So That's right. there were no, you know, so there were no black love stories out there for me. So I wrote my own. Like I said, with no vision of anybody else seeing it but me. Wasn't looking to get it published or any of that. Yes. But it turned out to be, you know, the the the, the cornerstone. Yes. You know, and so it turned out to be the, the foundation. So and you know, that's a powerful yeah. point that I want to to um drive home <laughs> is that when you have a passion for something and you do it because it's something you want to do, not because you feel obligated to do it, not because you're trying to make a dollar off of it, but it's just coming out right. of your soul. Um, there's yeah. a big difference in, and I think that's where a lot of people experience burnout and frustration and all of that because they're trying to churn out things that they people think other people want. But I think it's very right. important what you said about you wrote that book for you and somebody else read it and loved it. And what they say, the rest is history. Rest well, is I'm history. glad you wrote that book. I, I'm glad you wrote that book. <laughs> because you, you I am wrote, too. Yeah, you opened a lot of doors for a lot of um I noticed even more in a lot of years that there's been a lot more uh black women writing historical fiction, mm -hmm. not necessarily mm -hmm. black romance, but historical fiction, period. And I think it's because yeah. of pioneers and trailblazers like yourself who kicked that door open and Thank once you. again reminded us that we don't have to be limited by other people's opinions or um, we right. don't have to fit into a cookie cutter uh, situation. I love that. Now, let me ask you this question, Ms. Beverly. Right now, how many books have you penned? Do you uh, I don't know. Um <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to ask Monica. Um, 50, maybe? Maybe 50? Uh, wow. I'd have to go back and count. But, you know, I... You know, but when you look at some of the other writers who've been out here, like Brenda, Brenda Jackson celebrated her, I think, 100th book last summer. Wow. Um, you know, she doesn't do historical but she's still doing books. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's... People say I have a lot of books, but I know people who got more books than me. Okay, and but here's the thing. Here's the thing. that Some people have a lot of books as far as numbers. But right. when people are actually reading the book, absorbing the book, can't wait for yeah. the next book, that's that's mm -hmm. to me way more important than having a whole bunch of books with your name on it that nobody's hardly reading. Yeah, yeah, but you know Brenda's Brenda is as well loved as I am. Oh, absolutely. And you know, and 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 girlfriend got a whole lot more discipline than I have. You know, and I'm gonna she, tell you something, Miss Brenda. You gonna have to step up your game because Miss Brenda, I have won a <laughs> pocket calendar from Miss Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> last year i want a, a journal from miss brenda a notepad i know you have to step it up miss beverly uh, no i ain't doing that you know and it's you know and i don't give away swag right i have never <clears throat> the only time i give away swag is at my pajama party because for me my books are the swag you know, my books are I know, I know you. I know you just tease, them. but yeah, I'm like you know. And I, I go to these signings, and these women got, they got candy, they got cups, they got stuff, they got you know so much stuff you can't even see them. And I'm just coming in with my books, and I'm like, okay, I don't sold out. Here's me. Here's my book. Here's my books. Absolutely. Now let me ask you this question: After having writings uh, for so long. Um, mm -hmm and having this creative thing just constantly churning in your head, do you think you still feel the same enthusiasm for writing that you did at the oh, beginning? Oh, I do. I do. I do, but I'm tired. You know, mama's tired. You know, yes, and you, <clears throat> you get to the point where, you know, the, it's like being on a hamster wheel. You yeah. know, you go and go and go and go and deadline, 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 deadline. And it's like... You know, you know, it's like that thing. Uh, God, don't, don't, don't move the mountain. Just give me the strength to keep climbing, right? Climbing. So, you know, so, so you want to keep, 
you know, but at some point, you know, you just got to sit down. Oh, yeah, try and catch your breath, which, which is what I'm doing now. You know, right now I, I got really nothing on my plate and I'm making stuff to put on my plate, but it's on my own terms. Yes. yes. Um, I because, you know, I, you know, I got more road behind me than I got in front of me. Yes, ma'am. So, you know, try and, and, and make as much quality out of the life that I have left. Yes. As opposed to, you know, running myself crazy. So that's right. But I'm enjoying it. I, you know, my, 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 yeah, and I want to be here, you know. And for me, the most important thing about these whole 30 years of, I've been writing this, y'all. You know, I wouldn't be here without my readers. Yes, you know, because, you know, y'all, there's a whole lot of people y'all could be spending your money on. That hard yes, earned money. And, Y'all taking a portion of that money and spending it on me. Yes, so ma'am. I do everything that, you know, I I, I can to mm-hmm. let them know and to let you know that I love y'all to death. You know, I, I wouldn't, mm-hmm. I'm zip without y'all. You know, I would oh, not have sweet. this 30 year career without. Well, it's the truth. <laughs> you know, it, I, 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 ain't no sense to me lying about it. You know, I, I would not be here. Yes, ma'am. These 30 years without y'all, without y'all supporting me, without you buying my books, without you telling your neighbors about, you know, word of mouth. It's been like the gospel. You know, y'all yes. been just, you know, shouting the word. That's and right. I, I would not be here without you. So thank you, oh. everybody who supports Miss Bell. Yes. Thank you, Miss Bell. We love you. Now, with the stroke of your pen, and this question came to mm-hmm. me last night, and I had to write it down because I didn't want to forget it. With the stroke of your pen or your keyboard, however you write, where is it that you desire to transport your readers as you're writing? What is it that you want us to get as you're writing? Just how resilient we as a race have been how resilient, how hard we've worked, how much we've loved. Yes. um, How we put our energy into the culture so that those coming behind us will have a better road. In other words, trying to make the path wider. Yes, ma'am. And to highlight, you know, the, 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 the wealth of our history because we've got a great, deep, and rich history here in this country. Absolutely. And even though these people are pushing back on it and all of that, you know, right. they cannot take away you know, what we've accomplished. So That's right. Yes, yeah. ma'am. I love that. Yeah. Now, Ms. Weber, I wanted to say that um, one of the ladies who is watching right now is a friend of mine from Delaware. Mm-hmm. And... Um, mm-hmm as we're speaking about love and what have you, she buried her husband this past week. Um, oh. But she's always talking about the power of the love that they share. And yeah. even since he's been gone, she's always, even on social media, posting about things that they did together, vacations they did together yeah. like that. And she wanted to say good evening to you. Her name is Deborah. And I, okay. I wanted to make sure that I, that I brought her, you, her to your attention because I think it's, it's precious that she is here with us tonight with everything she's going through. And I just wanted you to say hi yeah. to her. Yeah, you know, I, I walked that road, baby. You know, I buried my love in 2003. And it's not something that you ever get over, but you get through it. And let those memories, you know, yeah, you're going to cry. And there's going to be some days when you don't even want to get out of bed. But that's okay. You know, let the memories of the love that you had, you know, keep you keep you connected. And you're going to dream about him. Um, and he's not far. He's not far. He's going to watch over you, fool. Until, you, until you're ready to... To make them yeah. steps on your own. He'll be there with you. Yeah. 
That's awesome. So take thank care, you. babe, okay? That's sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Bebe, let me ask you this question. What is your personal affirmation statement or practice? What is it that you say to yourself on a regular basis that keeps you moving forward, even in those rough moments that keeps affirming you to move on? Gratitude is the attitude. Gratitude is the attitude. I am so grateful I love that. for the life that I have. Um, even if, you know, you know, even if things go crazy, you know, it's, you know, you're grateful for that too. Um, one of my girlfriends always says that, you know, no matter what the day brings you, you know, it's either, and it's never a failure. It's either a win or a lesson. Mm -hmm. So, you know, every day I'm, I'm grateful for the wins. I'm grateful for the lessons. Uh, even if it's somebody in my life, I want to run my car over because, you know, they just getting on my last nerve. But gratitude, so grateful, you know, because it could be a whole lot worse. You know, I, I, I got a, a job I love. I got people in my life that I love that I don't even know. People That's praying right. for me that I don't even know. Yes, man. You know, That's so, right. you know, I've been given so much. And, you know, and when much is given, much is expected. That's right. So That's right. I try and. I try and be a blessing because <clears throat> it's easier to be a blessing than to be a bitch. You know, <laughs> That's um, the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> some people choose that other side of the of the equation. That's but right. you know, for me, for me, it's easier to be a blessing. And, and sometimes people just need a a kind word, or That's right. uh, sometimes people need more. But if I have it within my power to to help yes. i'm gonna try and do my best to to help that person so gratitude is the attitude gratitude is the attitude i love that and it's one of the things that i enjoy about um being connected to you even if i don't talk to you uh, or comment on whatever it's like even when you're mentioning that something is going on like with your washing machine or something <laughs> crazy is going on in the yard in the garden or whatever you always, at the end of that, you always ask us how we're doing. You always yeah. say, you know, my house just blew up. I'm just playing. But um, how's your day going? And and yeah. that means yeah. so much to me because it's like, that's a genuine person. And she genuinely cares about people. And that means so much. Yeah. And again, I, I'm just grateful to, I was trying to think the other day, who was it that recommended that I need to connect with you on social media. But, you know, my memory is not what it used to be. And I can't remember, Girl. but I'm so glad that I did connect with you because you have been a real blessing to me. Oh, we, we, we have a good time on Facebook. We have a good time on Facebook. I don't have no secrets. Y'all know, know all my business. You know, so. How's the grandbaby the birds in the backyard like you said. He's doing well. Doing well. Good, good. Yeah. Yes, well. indeed. Yeah. So you figured out the washing machine yet? Yes. I told <laughs> you I had this the, the the tech people came on Monday and told me it's a sweet spot on that button. Uh, and if you don't hit it directly on the sweet spot, it ain't gonna turn on. And I'm well, like, okay, can you give me back my dials and <laughs> You know, I'm a, you know, they don't come back with they don't come with no dials now. They are digital. Yeah. So I have been moving around that thing all weekend. Yeah, trying that to get it to work. It's crazy. And, and you're out there, you're in uh Michigan, right? Mm hmm What's the weather like out there today? Today it was 51. It was like, whoa, where are we? Oh no. Because it was it was like three degrees last week this time. Uh, that's what I remember you saying. Jeez. Yeah, eight Isn't below it? and three degrees. And today was 51. It's my mother nature is off her meds. Yeah. She don't definitely. know what she's doing from day to day. <laughs> yeah. So now we're talking about rain for the rest of the week. 
Okay. Excuse me. No problem. But well, well, yeah, Miss Beverly, I, you did you um yeah. have any snow in the forecast? We got snow. We got five inches of snow last week <laughs> when we had the three degrees. So it was you know freezing and snow, and uh, and now you know it's, it's like I said it's fifty one a day, so everything melted. <laughs> People's cars look a mess because <laughs> you know between the salt, yeah, you know, and all of that, and the birds in the backyard they confused. Yeah, they they don't know what to do. They don't you know, know but they somehow keep warm. You know they out there dodging the hawk that's in the yard. And he's Still ain't been able to figure out how to catch nobody. So, uh, That's so yeah. all right, Miss Bev, we're, um, our time is winding down now. Tell us what you're working on right now. What can we look forward to in the next six months or so? Um, next six months, nothing. But in October, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> so I hate us. <laughs> we have the uh, Blessings 11 comes out in October. So, you know, you guys have been waiting on that. I'm working on a suspense that I hope to get to you this year. I mean, y'all been waiting on sweetness for the last 15 years. So before y'all show up in front of my house with signs and bricks, I'm That's trying correct. to get this book That's done correct. for y'all. <laughs> and water hoses. Water hoses That's... and mm -hmm. Lord knows what else. That's but so for funny. sure, the blessings book. So you may get one or two books this year. Okay. Um, yeah, I love that blessing series. So, yeah, I do too. I, I do too. Yeah. yeah All so, right, Miss Bev, so I'm going to. Did you have anything else you want to share with um, the audience mm -hmm. before? You, you got any questions? Did you have any questions with me? Anybody got a question? No, nobody shared any questions. I guess they're just watching and listening. They might ask share yes, something later. Okay. Yeah. Well, they can always but hit I'm, me up on the they can always hit I'm me sorry. up later on the Facebook page. I was gonna say Absolutely. they can always hit me up later on the face on the Facebook yes, if they had question. Okay. Well, again, I All want right. to thank you for spending this time with me um this evening. As I was saying to you before we came um on the air, I have really been having some challenges physically. But I was determined yeah. I was going to put on some lipstick and some earrings and get on here. I love those earrings. I <laughs> love you. those earrings. Those are great. Thank yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, again, you see, I got the hat. I'm doing the hat today. <laughs> it's like, no, I, I love can't. It. I put the I lipstick on, but I need a hat. But my sister calls it the um, my Macy Gray intimate. Uh, <laughs> Whatever I'm trying to say, I can't even get my words. Macy together. Gray, yeah, Macy like Gray. when I, I'm saying, Oh my I'm god, my I have well, I had two, so. one of them died in 05, and then I have a younger sister, okay. Um, she okay. lives in Philly, but yeah, whenever she sees my hair going all over the place like that, she said, You're doing the Macy Gray today, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> how about everybody so mind your way, yeah. All right. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> and I, I will definitely be in touch and maybe we'll get you back before the year is out. I don't want to um that sounds good. wear out my well, I don't want to wear out my invitation. Well. <laughs> You're all right. I don't want her to say, you, oh my man. gosh, I mean, she's back again. Okay. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm like, are you tired of seeing her? Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, you have a great evening. Take care of yourself, girl. Yeah, take yes, care of yourself. I am. Uh, you know, do whatever the doctor been telling you to do that maybe you ain't been doing. <laughs> Let's not even talk about it. Let's not even talk about it. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. I know, me too. You hear me coughing. Me I hear you. I wasn't going to say right, nothing. Babe. All right. I know, man. These cigarettes. All right, All right girl. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Love, Love you too. Bye-bye.